sitting position that has this better is to examine in the, the lying position. Then uh, for the lower limbs, there is also this latent paresis test. Then we ask the patient to elevate both limbs with flexion, but with flexion, flexion of the knee, like this, but not uh, compress. And you can uh, bend it more because then you have to use the abdominal muscles. And we can do examine the, the limb muscles and to keep in this position with closed eyes. Okay, and if it's okay, we can do that. If it's for it, if it's for it, if the patient has a, a very mild, slight paresis in the proximal muscles, then on the side of the paresis, the limb will slowly sink. This is the latent paresis positivity. Okay, then uh, to examine every muscle group on the lower limb, and it, uh, we do it uh, only on one uh, limb. So first is the flexion of the hip, so hip movements, flexion and extension. This is a physical exam, then uh, this bend of the hip, and not allow me to push down. Okay. Like this, okay, and on the other side also. Good. So this is the normal hip flexion strength. Then to examine the hip extension, we can ask the patient to, to uh, compress the heel to the, to the table and not allow me to, elevate, to raise, okay, to push down. Okay, so normally I cannot overcome the same thing. Okay, then the uh, knee, the patient should perform the movement, for example the flexion of the knee and not allow me to extend. And the other side is the thing, not a limit to extend. Okay? Then the extension of the knee, then the patient extends the knee, and not a limit, not maximum, okay? Not a limit to bend, not a limit to bend. Then uh, the ankle, we ask the patient to perform the dorsal flexion, okay? Not a limit to come. Push down, same thing, and then the plantar flexion and not allow me to perform the opposite uh, movement. Okay, and then this was the muscle strength. Next is the examination of the tendon muscle. Okay, then the <coughs> tendon reflexes with the reflex hammer, then we examine the, the biceps. So the, for the examination of the tendon reflexes, we ask the patient to lie or sit uh, also relaxed. It should be really relaxed if the patient performs some uh, innervation of the muscles, then uh, we cannot even the uh, tendon reflexes. And then the biceps reflexes uh, <coughs> examine the, the ways that the uh, index finger should be placed on the uh, tendon and the reflex on the the uh, on the reflex okay. Same thing on the other side, then you can use the thumb. Okay. It's placed on the tendon. This is the way. Okay. Then uh, the triceps. For the triceps, uh, mid, uh, directly the tendon is uh, Okay, so it should be really re uh, relaxed and it should be in this semi flexed position. Can you that on purpose or that was normal? <laughs> Chill, chill. Hmm? Chill out, chill. Chill out. 
Okay, so Pythagoras, <coughs> and then uh, the Achilles treatment, it can be about several time, uh, ways, but uh, I show you two ways, okay? So one is the uh, lip should be also in this semi flat the position, and then hand is uh, placed. A lot of memory. Memory, okay. We What? The memory That's is going to run out. Too much information in one day. Too much? <laughs> Uh, for the for the, yeah. Yeah. Wait, finish this one. This semi flexed position, and then I place my uh, hand on the sole, uh, and a little bit uh, should be uh, dorsal flexed. No, 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 not sure. Right. It's by the doctor. Okay, and then the tendon is beaten. If it doesn't work for some reason, maybe the patient has some joint problem, cannot perform this uh, relaxed position, and it can be performed so that the patient bend the knee and the hip, and the patient should be asked to, to like a <coughs> hanging, hanging. Uh, yeah, so, so you should uh, okay. uh, hold the weight and in this position. Okay? <coughs> Yes, you got it. Okay, and the same thing on the other side. Like this. Or this. So this is the best for the bad side. There are some other ways to evoke, but this is the most convenient. Then next step is uh, the pyramidal signs. Pyramidal signs can be evoked uh, on the upper limb, and the, but the most important is the um, Pyramidal signs on the lower limb. I show you the on the upper limb is the Hoffman and Turner sign. So the Hoffman and Turner sign is involved that the patient should also uh, keep relaxed the hand and the fingers. And then uh, this is performed with this movement. Can you? You point? Okay, it should be fast. And what is examined is the uh, thumb. If it's this reflex is positive, then in the thumb will be a fast uh, flexion and then an opposition movement. So a, a small fast movement will be, can be observed. It's negative. Okay. Okay. This was the Turnerian uh, sign, and the Hoffman is performed like this. Okay. With all this. Okay. And of course, on the other side, so that will be examined. And for the camera, you get also the same thing? Function, right? Yes, uh, it's the same. The response is the same. In case of positivity? If it's positive. Okay. And uh, both uh, Hoffman and Turner can, can be uh, positive on both sides. If it's positive on both sides symmetrically, then it's normal. It is a positive uh, pyramidal sign. It's a positive pyramidal sign if it's only unilateral or, or it's uh, asymmetric, more pronounced on one side. Okay, can you do the other side? We can do it. So, Babinski sign is the. My feet. <laughs> then it is performed with uh, some uh, sharp uh, device. This is the front device, <coughs> and the uh, patient also should uh, keep the, the leg relaxed. And then this is the movement how we, we can walk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is the line, how... In, did you see? Yeah, you still see the mark. Can I do it again? Sure. So what you say? Okay, so normally it should be a plantar flexion, and if, it, if, it's, if it's positive, then it's a tonic dorsal flexion of the thumb. Okay. Should we do the other side as well? Or? The other side will go the same way. Should we clap for him? Hmm? Is it finished? No. No. It's, it's just started. 
tehát within is the pyramidal system, corticospinal tract system. The next, uh, next part of the physical examination is the sensory, sensory system examination. This is part of, part of it is, uh, as a cranial of the trigeminal nerve. It is examined the same way on the body, the, the spinal thalamic uh, system, which is for the superficial sensory modalities, which are the superficial touch, pain, and the uh, temperature sensation. Most uh, is convenient is to examine the pain sensation. So the examination is the same way. We ask the patient if he or she can uh, feel it. Is it sharp? The other side? Is it sharp? And is the both sides are, are the same? Yeah. It's the same. And that's the same thing on the lower limbs. But if uh, it depends on what do we look for. If the patient uh, has a hemispheric lesion, a stroke for example, and we look for uh, a hemi, hypesthesia. So, hypesthesia on one side of the body. If the patient has a spinal cord lesion, then we are looking for the nivo. The nivo means the level of the dermatome, from which uh, level distally on both sides the patient has, or maybe on one side if it's just a unilateral spinal cord lesion, but it's rare. Usually it's bilateral. The patient has the nivo from which uh, distally has hypostephia, okay? Or high, it's a hypoalgesia if it's the pain sensation. It's the hypoalgesia if it's a superficial type, if it's the pain. It's the hypostephia, and uh, we can perform this examination also with the heart or cord cube or Ives cube, for example, is also a way to examine this, the sensory system. And if the patient has something peripheral nerve lesion, the same thing, we have to examine the distribution of the, the, the area which are uh, innervated by the certain sensory nerve. Okay? Or if it's a uh, root lesion, as most commonly with a disc herniation, then we look uh, in the, on the uh, territory of the dermatome for hypostasis, okay? But uh, this is for the superficial sensation, the toothpick or uh, cold tone for the superficial touch or the temperature sensation. And uh, the other part of the sensory uh, system is the uh, posterior column system, which is for the deep sensi sensory modalities and the uh, big but it's most simple to examine at the back side. Uh, as a uh, deep sensi sensory modality is the uh, um, joint position, sensation, joint position, sensation, then how to do it? Then <coughs> we ask the patient to close the eyes and uh, indicate the direction of the uh, joint movement. And the patient has to uh, be able to sense very very discrete, uh, small movement in the distal uh, phalanxes of the hand. The, the deep sensory function is normal. Okay, so <coughs> tell me which direction I move the finger. Down. Okay. Up. Okay. Down. Okay. Down. 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 Normal movement uh, has to be precisely uh, the sensation has to be normal. The same thing we have can be performed on the legs. And uh, another way uh, to examine this system is the vibration sensation.